So I'm going to be giving an updated review on Ignition Poker and breaking down some super sick hands that you don't want to miss at the $200 cash game where we got up to around $550 for playing 45 minutes of gameplay. I know it's pretty crazy, but it is what happened. Now, I've mentioned in the past, I play on five or six different sites currently, but I'm always on Ignition because, you know, the players are super fishy at these mid-state games. And that's really where you can start to make some decent money playing online poker when you get up to the $200 cash games, you know, multi-tabling two tables at a time, and then eventually moving up to $500. Um, cash game tables or just mixing it up in between. Um, of course, as well, if you guys want to learn more about Ignition or get started here as we're going over it, we'll have some bonus and resource links directly below in the description. And feel free to comment below about any of the hands in this session because we had some crazy plays we made here and uh, you know things for the most part went our way, which is always nice, right? Uh, our hands held up, our bluffs got through, etc. Okay, so we got pocket kings. We got dealt kings early, which is always nice. You know, sometimes you'll play for an hour or more and you won't even get a good pocket pair like queens or jacks. I mean, it does happen, but, you know, we were definitely getting some good cards for sure. Now, I actually spiced this up a little bit and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to three bet this pretty big. You know, I could have gone like $18, maybe 21, but I was like, you know, let's just spice it up here. See if anybody, you know, wants to make the call. And sometimes when you three bet kind of weird like this, other players are going to be like, is this guy just bluffing? Like, what is he doing? Why did he raise, you know, with such a weird amount, right? You know, I, I kept it a little bit strange, but we did get a caller. Hoping to get two callers. And we did. All right, so the flop was very safe. Um, always nice not to see an ace hit the board when you got pocket kings. You know, I insta-called this guy. He just shoved a hole in with ace-jack. Just dodging the ace. He hit the jack on the river, but didn't really matter because we had kings, and we started off with a, with a nice hand there. And obviously, they got played really ridiculous. Like I said, you got some super fishy players, you know, these mid-state games. I can't stress that enough. And it, it is important. You want to be playing against weaker opponents, and you get a lot of that here. Okay, we had ace-jack in this spot, and we were dealing with a three-bet. Now, a lot of players will fold an ace-jack offsuit to a three-bet, but I know better. Plus, I'm confident enough in my game that I can outplay somebody depending on the flop, you know, uh, in, in whatever the board texture is. But anyways, not a good flop, and it's very likely that it could be a bad flop for this guy as well. You, know, you could have a couple overcards to this, like ace-king or ace-queen. Uh, you know, maybe some ace jacks, maybe some mid pocket pairs still. But, you know, I was going to make a call here to see a turn card. Turn card, we did hit the ace. And really what I was thinking here was, okay, um, you know, he three bet. So we're dead in a lot of spots here. Uh, you know, if he has a hand like ace queen or ace king, I mean, we're drawing real slim here. So really my, I have two plays at this point. You know, if he's going to bet here again, which he does, I could represent something bigger, um, you know, maybe like a set or, uh, you know, or, or if he, he could still be on a draw here as well. So we're not a couple ways I could do it. Right. Um, I decided just to come over the top here and risk it for that biscuit, hoping I could get this guy to fold if he does have a hand, you know, like ace king or ace queen. Um, and, you know, I don't know what he had. I didn't check the hand history right there, but I was OK with the play. I feel like that was a 50 50 spot. And I went forward and it worked out. So, you know, still playing pretty strong here, making some moves early. Things are going our way. Always nice. Now, this hand was a little bit frustrating because we called a raise of $14. Um, but, you know, we had an all-in re-raise with the short stack at the table. And, you know, then we had a re-raise all-in for like $200. So I couldn't make this call, but it cost me 14 bucks. And I was kind of like, come on now. Is this really how this is going to go down? But it was. Now, if that guy didn't re-raise shove here um, for his whatever $200, I would have actually made this call because we were already all in for a lot. And look at the flop, guys. I mean, that's ridiculous. I would have been in a real tricky spot um, having these straight flush draw. You know, I probably was going to lose there. So it's a good thing that we ended up folding because... 
honestly in that flop. It would have been uh, pretty pretty tough um, if we were dealing with like an all-in situation from that other player with, you know, the bigger stack. But, you know, it worked out. We wouldn't have got there, and we only lost 14 bucks uh, pre-flop. It is what it is. Okay, so I uh, hope you're still here because, like I said, we got up to around like 550 in this, so we, we had some more interesting hands uh, to go over here. Okay, ace-10, I called the preflop raiser. Now, obviously, when you get people raising an early position, you know, first or second to act, they've usually got a pretty strong hand or a decent hand, you know, to open up with. Okay, this is one of those flops, once again, that it probably didn't hit anybody. You know, a couple nines out there with the deuce. Uh, very likely, the guy who open raised has a couple high cards as, you know, per usual. And, you know, I figured maybe we hit a 10, even an ace on the turn could be good still. So I wasn't going anywhere, especially with the continuation bet here, just putting people in whatever range they might have. I think it checked. Yeah, and then an ace hit on the turn. Now, the guy who open raised, like I said, very likely he has an ace. He could also have her kicker dominated, very likely as well. And I kind of knew that, but I made the call here. River card was a three. Now, he bet a decent sizing. And like I am I said, you know, if this guy has, and it, it was very likely to me, he has probably like an ace, queen, ace, jack type of hand. So our kicker is no good. Really, the only way I could win this hand was not by calling, obviously. So I put in a raise to like $100. And basically what I was doing here was repping, representing the nine and hoping to get him off his hand because, you know, he has to figure what did I call the flop with. Um, he folded it pretty quick. So, you know, once again, I really like my play right there. The kicker wasn't very wasn't very good. And we were losing to a lot of, you know, ace queens, ace jacks. Um, and that's why I made that play and it worked out. We got him off the hand, which is always nice. Now, this is probably one of my favorite hands of the session um, for a couple of reasons. So when somebody raises you in late position, it's likely that they just have like a mediocre hand, especially somebody in the small blind. Now, we got a 10-6 suited. You might be looking at this hand like, why would you three bet this? The reason you're three betting this hand is because you're trying to protect your big blind. Worst case, he makes a call on you um, and you could still hit the flop. You don't really know. And you're also building a pot. Um, and it's confusing your opponent too, because you know he's not gonna he's not gonna see a hand like this, especially if it hits the flop really well. Anyways, we hit a uh, middle pair. Still ahead of a lot of hands, um, you know, like uh, king queens and things like that. Uh, you know, um, behind obviously just some queen jack type hands. River card was a four. Put a flush out there. Really wasn't worried about that at all. Um, and this guy decided to bet at it. So not a hundred percent sure what he was repping just yet, but. With the fact that I have middle pair here, we could still hit maybe three of a kind uh, on the river or two pair on the river. I was not going anywhere. Also felt like he might have a pair of jacks here. Possibly. Give it a 50-50. Okay, so I made the call. I didn't really hesitate at all because it also could have been a little bit bluffy, honestly. Anyways, we hit two pair on the river. The flush got there, but at the same time, guys, I was not putting this guy in a flush. I was putting him on either having maybe a hand like king jack or ace jack or, uh, you know, a hand like ace queen or ace king where he missed it or even king queen missed it. So there's a lot of hands in his range that he missed, especially calling my three bet preflop. Anyways, um, he's going to put a continuation bet in here on the river value bet or a bluff bet. I kicked it up here once again. My gut, my gut feeling here just told me that we had him. So I went for the re-raise value with the two pair. 
he folded pretty quickly so i think he didn't even have a pair there he was probably just trying to buy the pot and it didn't work out for him because we had the 10 6 suited which is obviously one of the best hands you can get right all right, a um, couple more. Uh, like I said, we got up to around 550. So, you know, playing real smooth here, making some plays, a lot of thought process going into this. It's not like I'm just making these plays on the fly. I I'm actually thinking them through. All right, uh, Queen 7, uh, we made a call here, and this was an interesting flop, but I played it cautiously. You know, we had bottom pair here with the Queen High flush draw, so not a bad flop at all, but it's not like one I'm going to get super crazy with. Uh, but I will, you know, call continuation bets to see turn cards, but I'm not really thinking about re-raising or anything like that at this point. Just going cautious with this one. All right, small continuation bet, totally fine. Making the call, looking for that, you know, that diamond on the turn. All right, didn't get there. Depending on the sizing of the next bet, based on what was in the pot, I was like, all right, if it's not too big, I'll make a call here to see a river card. Key, though, not too big. And I think this guy went for $20, which was just enough for me to make the call. Okay, unfortunately, we didn't get there. And when you're up against two other opponents, obviously, it felt like somebody probably had a top pair or a pair here. Um, somebody was probably in a draw like myself. And I'll tell you what, sometimes it's better just to check it down and not lose any more money than to try to bluff at a hand like this, I just felt like if I bet real big here, I just feel like somebody's going to call just based on how we all played the hand. And, you know, we took the loss on that. I was fine with it. It is what it is. We didn't get there. And I think it's very likely if I bet like a real big bet, like $100 there, I think that guy's going to make the call with Ace Jack. I don't know if I could see him folding it. All right, we still got a couple more here. Um, Jack King, I hope you guys are enjoying some of these hands. Uh, you know, Ig Ignition, like I said, um, you know, super fishy players here, which is always great. And, uh, you know, grab those bonuses directly below. All right, so I made the call here. Jack King suited, got to do it. <laughs> Real nice flop, honestly. I mean, you don't like to see the ace out there, but at least you know you've got the nut flush draw, right? Anyways, we had a Jack on the turn. Wasn't the card we were looking for. I was okay with checking this. You know, it felt like the guy might have had a hand like pocket queens or kings, and he was immediately afraid of the ace. Uh, but he didn't even have that good. He had pocket tens. Um, so our Jack King took it down. Okay, now this is the final hand I'm going to be going over. And it was interesting. This was actually a super tough call that I made in this hand. And I wanted to go over my thought process on it because... There's a couple of reasons I ended up making a really tough call on this hand. Uh, you know, three bet came in. I don't think it was a huge three bet, but, you know, just check it out. Tried to slow it down a little bit because, you know, um, there's a couple uh, things that the player made that are sometimes online poker tells. I mean, they do exist. One of them is when you bet super fast the opponent's usually bluffing because if you had a really good hand, it doesn't always make sense that you're going to bet super fast because you're really what you're thinking is you're trying to get as much value out of somebody when you have, you know, the nuts or a really good hand. Um, and you're not going to just like bet super, super fast. It doesn't always make a lot of sense. And that's exactly what happened in this hand. Okay. A small three bet. I made the call and we did see an ace on the flop, which is a little bit disheartening, right? But, you know, depending on the bet sizing here, I'm obviously going to make a turn call. Uh, what was interesting, though, is we didn't see that, and we had an ace hit on the turn. And when that ace hit on the turn, this guy decided to bet at it very fast, which did not make any sense to me. You know, if you've got an ace, um, you know, you're probably going to try to, like, get a smaller sizing to get your opponent to call first off. You're not going to bet that big. And w this guy decided to bet pretty darn big here on the river, 
So he bet 60 bucks at it. I don't know if that was the pot. I think it was the pot um, or right around there. Uh, but just because he bet so darn fast at this, I was like, I just don't believe it. You know, if you've got me, you got me. But in this spot, I was, if I had to give a percent, I was like in the 70% range that he was bluffing. Obviously, I was not not nearly that 80 or 90, but I felt like this guy was definitely more bluffing at this than he had it. Just based on how he played it, it was just so weird. Um, anyways, I am going to let the clock run down pretty far. I ended up making the right call there. And we took down a nice hand. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed some more hands here on Ignition. You know, uh, obviously, stick around. Get ready for the next one because we've got some more good cash games coming up. So we'll see you all in the next poker video.